Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're discussing this really interesting concept known as the Unruh radiation. And more specifically, the experiment that was recently proposed, but still not conducted, that can potentially prove its existence. Which, if proven and if discovered, would be completely groundbreaking. And so in this video I wanted to discuss exactly what this Unruh radiation is, and what this type of an experiment can help us understand about the universe, and of course about everything else out there. But I guess to start, well, let's start with where all of this starts, black holes. So back in the 70s, Stephen Hawking, while studying black holes, realized that, well, even though we call them black, in reality they probably do emit radiation. Not a lot of radiation, but it still should be there. And today we refer to this as Hawking radiation. In essence, produced by the event horizon of the black hole itself. Now we've discussed how this works many times before, but in a nutshell, it really all has something to do with the ideas behind quantum physics. Okay, so what exactly are these ideas? Well, let's actually come back to space here for a second. So right now, theoretically at least, or what you probably learned from your physics classroom is that we're in vacuum. And by definition, vacuum means that there's nothing there. It's an empty space. But even though space here is vacuum in terms of matter, in modern physics, vacuum is not really the absence of everything. It simply means the ground state for a lot of different fields. And so I guess one way of imagining what vacuum is, is sort of thinking of these fields, kind of like what you see right here, with all of them stacked together, and all of them being in the ground state, producing the minimal possible energy. But the thing is, even in their ground state, they still produce a few fluctuations here and there. And a lot of these fluctuations end up producing particles, depending on the field. Today this concept is referred to as the quantum vacuum state, and these quantum fluctuations, which can be visualized this way, can actually produce a lot of different particles, which then sort of disappear into nothingness once again. And these types of quantum fluctuations have been actually detected in various experiments. And for example, in this laser experiment, it's seen as red, which is basically the amplification of various quantum fluctuations. And so this definitely exists, and in vacuum this happens all the time. But when these particles are produced very, very close to the event horizon of a black hole, occasionally one of the particles might fall into the black hole with the antiparticle escaping, or vice versa. And what this ends up producing is, of course, what we refer to as Hawking radiation. Now, Hawking radiation from black holes has never really been physically observed, but it has been observed from black hole analogs, such as the ones using various sounds or various types of liquids. And so, in that sense, we think that it's real and it definitely exists. But that's of course when it comes to black holes. And by definition, of course, all of this is due to the acceleration or the gravity from the black hole itself. But then when we bring this guy's ideas into the picture, and especially something known as the equivalence principle, we realize that, well, gravity and acceleration are basically the same thing. So in theory, acceleration should also be causing some unusual effects, and potentially even some unusual effects involving virtual particles. Or in other words, acceleration in theory might actually also produce what's known as the Hawking radiation, with more acceleration producing more dramatic effects. And so that's when the ideas from this wonderful Canadian come into the picture. This is William Unruh, a professor from Canada, who used a combination of Einstein's and Hawking's ideas to propose his own idea. And today we refer to this as Unruh radiation or Unruh effect. And the idea here is in regards to acceleration. If you accelerate fast enough, in theory you should start seeing some of these particles, these virtual particles, produced by the vacuum itself. Or in other words, all of the virtual particles produced right here, which will probably have a tremendously low amount of energy in the beginning, just through the sheer process of acceleration, will suddenly seem like they've acquired a lot of energy, and potentially even become visible, and maybe even produce heat. Or in other words, if you were to take a thermometer, and if you were to start vibrating it really fast, and thus produce a lot of acceleration on the inside, because of the theory from Unruh, simply because of the acceleration itself, the temperature inside the thermometer is actually going to start increasing. And theoretically, all of this makes sense. It's basically a combination of Einsteinians and Hawking ideas, and as it stands, it definitely is very sound. The problem is this has never really been tested. And to date, a few papers that claim to have discovered the effect 
were either disproved with time or potentially had some other problems with the experiment itself, and so the actual observations are still questionable. But that one study I just showed you, using some sort of a golden needle and accelerating it to the extreme effects, and claiming to have observed unruh radiation at the tip of the needle itself. So that's the natural of the unruh radiation. If you actually want to learn more about the entire topic, check out the video from BBS that explains all of this in more detail and with slightly better animations. This one here is also in the description below. And so, in the last few decades, several major experiments have been proposed and tried in order to basically confirm the existence of unruh radiation and the unruh effect. But so far, nothing. For example, some experiments try to accelerate various types of electrons in order to see if the unruh radiation would have any effect on the electrons themselves. But once again, all of the discoveries so far have really been sort of preliminary and not really confirmed just yet making this idea of unruh radiation a very intriguing theory, but not really confirmed in any way or not really detected anywhere. But once again, the idea itself is very solid. If we can confirm through other experiments that a typical black hole with a lot of gravity can produce virtual particles and can produce Hawking radiation, simply based on the equivalence principle, exactly the same thing should be happening because of the acceleration itself. But the problem is, the amount of acceleration is needed to detect any of this. All of the theoretical data suggests that in order to experience one single degree of change, or basically one degree Kelvin of unruh radiation, you would have to accelerate an object with something like this many g's of forces. That's a ridiculous amount of acceleration that we are not even sure how to produce here on the planet just yet. And obviously no detector that we currently have can even survive this. And because of this, for many decades, a lot of scientists believe that maybe this is just going to remain a theory that's just going to be almost impossible to prove. Because even with some of the most advanced technology, it would be practically impossible to detect this particular type of radiation. But this new paper that was published not so long ago seems to argue otherwise. They might have devised an experiment that should be possible to create here on planet Earth, and it might be able to help us prove the existence or non-existence of unruh radiation. And although it hasn't been conducted yet, it's already in the works and might be conducted in the next few years. So here's how the scientists are planning to do this. It's essentially going to involve a box that's going to be super cooled and have vacuum on the inside. And they're going to have a membrane whose main purpose is to serve as a kind of a detector as it oscillates ridiculously fast. All of this oscillation, in theory, should be producing a lot of acceleration. And the acceleration is going to be experienced in both directions. And here, all of the virtual particles that are produced inside of this cavity, or basically all of these quantum fluctuations which are going to have very specific frequency based on the size of the box itself, are then going to start experiencing these unruh effects and are going to start transforming, in theory producing heat that should be observable through the membrane. And the actual detection is going to be done through nitrogen-based imperfections inside the diamond membrane that's going to be used as a kind of a detector. You can kind of see it as those red dots right there in the middle. With the membrane itself being made out of diamonds in order to withstand all of this acceleration. And so the membrane is sort of acting like a trampoline, it's accelerating extremely fast. And the detector is right in the middle of it. And in theory, right at the center, the actual transition from the normal phase to the so-called super radiant phase should be visible assuming that unruh radiation exists. With the detected light being so much similar in frequency to what we have inside the microwave, a few gigahertz in frequency. On top of this, to make sure that the light detected is actually coming from these virtual particles and not from somewhere outside, the experiment here is specifically designed to detect only the entangled light. So it's only going to be detecting the fluctuations from the vacuum itself, not really light coming from the outside the box or from other unknown source. Which, once again, at least theoretically means that if unruh radiation is real, this type of an experiment can definitively show its existence. But if it doesn't find anything, that's kind of when we start discussing what's going on here and why nothing was found. At the moment, almost everyone thinks that something is going to be discovered once the scientists are able to conduct this experiment. It hasn't been done yet, but it's coming hopefully in the next few years. And so once we have some more information or once someone conducts this experiment and either finds or doesn't find the so-called unruh radiation, 
we're going to talk about this one more time and probably discuss what exactly all of this means. At the moment, if there is actually something discovered about this, it can definitively help us understand how all of this works inside black holes as well and how we can potentially discover Hawking radiation from an actual black hole by possibly using some sort of a similar detector in the future. And more specifically, it's also going to serve as a definitive confirmation for what we believe about quantum physics and for what we understand about Einsteinian's principles as well. Specifically, the ideas behind the production of these virtual particles by the vacuum itself. But I guess for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study and relevant links, including the video I showed you from PBS in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.